They're off to thrills in the ice to the land of the Eskimo. With a wet sheet and a flowing swell and a wind that follows fast, that fills the white and rustling sails and bends the mast. And bends the gallant mast, my boys, while like the eagle free, away the good ship flies and leaves the mainland in the lee. Yes, to the coast of many lands, Nova Scotia, Newfoundland, Labrador, with our bow-headed Baffin Bayward. Seals are sighted. Atlantic hair seals, not the fur seals of the Pacific that give up their pelts for women's coats and men's wallets. This type is known as the large harp or Greenland seal. When anything made of seal skin is bought, it is fairly certain that the material came from the backs of mammals like these, for they provide about all the pin seal leather armors. For Newfoundlanders, sealing is a major industry and a hazardous one. Six generations of some families have gone down to the icy sea in sealing ships. At times, their catch has totaled half a million pelts. They're headed north. Ice is sighted. Small ice floes float away from parent fields and bergs. Possibly these were giant icebergs once and have dwindled and melted to smaller size in the waters of warmer straits. A huge mountain of ice breaking up in the form of a perfect arch. Nature is the architect here, bridging, tunneling, and shaping great floating cathedrals whose walls are alabaster-like in the light of the Arctic sun. Bergs become more frequent and more solid as our good ship bears us farther north, far into the Arctic Circle, through Davis Strait, and on toward Baffin Bay. Beautiful to see, but the terror of all sailors who ply polar waters, here in the Arctic, or down under in Antarctica. Constant vigil must be kept. The reflection of this berg in the sea is deceptive. It mirrors only that part that floats above the surface and hides the mass that lies beneath. For only one-ninth of an iceberg is visible above water. Eight-ninths of these monster vagrants are unseen lurking like submarines with their greater bulk out of sight. Bergs have been seen 300 feet high above the surface, which means they extended for 2,400 feet under sea. By day or by night, awash or at anchor, bergs and clouds contribute their part to breathtaking sunscape. Now it's ashore for a visit to a tiny Eskimo village. The word Eskimo is said to mean raw flesh eater. The way they're enjoying this walrus seems to prove it. Seal and walrus delicacies for the little ones too. And carved while you wait. Table etiquette in the Arctic. Not only food, but clothing, oil, housing material, and many utensils come to the Eskimo from the walrus and seal. A jolly, good-natured race, intelligently adapting themselves to the rigors of a wintry climb, our Eskimo enjoy a different kind of feast aboard ship. No, it's not blubber, but it must taste good from the looks of that bowl. Contentment personified. A sail again. They sight a bear. A fine specimen of polar bear, 
whose only idea is to get away fast. And the speed that he's making is no snail's pace. Time out for a breathing spell and a chance for out ways of escape. But he keeps going, heading for a safety zone. Animal instinct directs his course so that barriers stand between him and his pursuers. Barriers of ice that make capture difficult. Or a white background against which his white coat is not easily seen. Relentlessly the pursuit continues. Watch is kept as the sturdy ship plows on. It's many men and might against one animal. Here's a break for the bear. Will he get away? Will the time it takes to split low be enough for his escape? Men go over the side, into a canoe, determined to capture the big fellow. A tiny craft in canyons of ice. Abandoning the big ship, the chase is taken up in a shallow bottom boat that can follow him wherever he goes, and as fast, too, through channels that are silver strips of the sea. She abandons her cub. One of them is lassoed, just like his dad. Just like his dad, he puts up a real Bruin fight for him. Look at the little fellow. Those paws have sharp claws, and the men in the boat know it. The odds are too great against him, and over the side he comes. Father is not doing much better. He has the advantage of size, weight, and animal cunning over his cub son. But all his gnashing teeth and powerful paws cannot free him from those captive strands. Like son, like father. Here he comes, too, close on the heels of the little one. Hundreds of pounds of fighting mad bear, ready to tear his captors apart. Caught in a plight he can't figure out. It looks all over now. But is it? It certainly is not. For here they are, living the life of Riley, right in home surroundings in one of the best of American zoos. Their reward for our Arctic thrill.